Hello YouTube, Sam here from youtube.com slash onlivegamer for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, we're going to be covering overriding inherited functions. In this case, we're going to override the toString function uh, that is that we used in the last tutorial. Now, if you remember in the last tutorial, we have the customer structure. We created add customer, which will create a customer object based on the first name, last name, and email that is passed to this sub. Um, it sets the values inside of our object customer structure or our object new customer structure and then we added that structure or that customer to our my customers array list and then we just went ahead and added that to this list box right here and you can see when they click the button it adds a couple customers so you can see that we got a little problem when we ran this if we click list customer instead of giving us the customers name and email we get uh, the project name, the class name, and the structure name. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to override the toString function. Because we use toString right here, we want toString to do something other than just converting it to a string. So let's go ahead and open our customer structure. So inside of this structure, um, if you remember that structures can use functions and subs, methods, um, and some other stuff, they're just not as useful as classes. So what we're going to do is we're going to override the toString method inside here. So we will just type public so that anybody outside outside of this customer uh, structure can use this function. So public overrides. So what this is saying is overrides. Let's see. It says, specifies that a property or procedure overrides an identically named property or procedure inherited from a base class. So basically what this means is that um, we're going to use the same exact name as toString that is uh, inherited, and we're going to tell it to do something other than what it normally does. And toString is a function because it returns a value. And you can see here that it gives us the option to use toString. It says, returns the fully qualified type name of this instance. So we can go ahead and press enter and it'll fill in everything for us. Um, overrides to string as a string because it's going to return a string and then it's got end function. So what we're going to do is we want to return uh, whatever we want to be put inside of this list box right here. So instead of giving us useless information, we want it to give us the user's name and their email. So we will just return name and you can see here uh, that we get public read only property as string which is this property right here. So we want to return name and we'll just add a space and a parentheses and then we'll add their email and then we'll add more parentheses. So this will just enclose their email inside of parentheses. So now that we've overrided the function to string, uh, we can go ahead and minimize out of this structure right here. Let's come down here to button one click or no, add customers. So what it's going to do is it's going to add object new customer to this list box, but since object new customer is a of type customer, our structure right here, our structure has the function to string in it. So when we call to, to string, it's going to be calling this one right here instead of the default to string that is inherited. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see that when we type, when we click list customer, we get Sam hello and then Sam dot hello at programmer dot com, uh, John Roberts and Rachel Smith, and you can see that it will add them the way we want to because we overrided to string and had it put their name and their email uh, next to each other. Now, if we called to string anywhere else in our program um, that wasn't of type customer, so if we declared an integer and used dot to string on that, it'll do it the normal way and it will convert that to a string. This to string is only used for um, the for structure customers. So when we create a customer object um, and we call to string, it's going to use this one up here, uh, right here. So um, go ahead and you can place uh, overriding functions uh, s somewhere else in your program, so it can be used, uh, let's say, throughout the entire class. So if we put this up here. Um, it would override to string for the entire class, but of course we would get an error because name and email are not defined outside of this structure. But you can uh, put an overriding to string outside of this structure right here and have it return something else. 
Um, so go ahead and practice a little bit with overriding functions. It's a little bit hard to understand at first, but um, you'll get it after a while uh, with some practice. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned for the next tutorial.